Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Speak, Film, and Enter, a podcast where we review and rank movies. I'm Nate. And I'm Dylan. And I'm Adam. And we finally made it. Today is our Mm -hmm. top 10 movies of 2022 episode, which it reached a point where it was a little later than we wanted to, and then we figured we might as well just wait until we get closer to the Oscars. Yeah. Yeah. We we tend to release to look back again. Mm -hmm. (laughs) No. Yeah, we tend to release these around the Oscars. So in this case, we're getting out a week ahead of it. Because, of course, yeah, our, and, you know, our top 10 rankings are more important than anything that's going to happen at the Oscars. Who cares about what the cast yeah. yeah. is? Yeah. yeah and and a bunch want. of hoser, hosers. As may be <laughs> obvious to many of you, we are not professional movie critics. So we don't get advanced <laughs> screeners on a lot of these. We don't get to a lot of the festivals. Mm-mm. So for us, a lot of times we need to wait until January, February in order to have some of those later ones, particularly foreign movies a lot of the time. Mm-hmm. finally show up in the u.s for us to see so that's another reason that we wait a little bit longer we're not like indie wire who can release it on like december 1st because yeah, they've seen yeah. everything already yeah <laughs> uh, so whatever. we're more in touch with the salt of the earth right the real people the rubes out there the people's podcast mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm all right. Um, so yeah, before we get into our top ten, also we're going to be doing it a little differently this year. Normally we go, uh, you know, uh, pick by pick, going ten to one. So we'll go around the room for ten, around the room for nine. We're going to switch it up this time, and we're just each person is just going to do their top ten. We're just going to go one person at a time. Um, that might help it move, move a little smoother, I think. Yeah, absolutely. So before we get started, I guess uh, each of us can kind of go around the room. What did we think of? 2022 was it a good movie year bad movie year mediocre movie year what were your thoughts and what what are going to be kind of your lasting impressions on the 2022 movie slate you can go first adam um i mean i'm looking at my list here of the movies i did see this year and the ones i liked i really really liked but then i feel like there's kind of a gap there's not that many movies in the middle that are that i gave like a bunch of threes to they're like all right this is this is good enough that like i'd throw it on in the background or i'd watch it a, a, a few times there's a lot of like this is really good and it's one of my favorite things and like all right that was all right so mm-hmm. as, i mean the marvel movies we got this year were a little wonky like i wasn't a huge fan of wakanda forever multiverse mm-hmm. of madness was a little I mean, I enjoyed parts of it. I liked some of the story in it, but it was a little kind of all over the place. Um, mm-hmm. And that's, I feel like that's kind of indicative of the year. Um, but like I said, the things that are at the top are really at the top. So, yeah, I'll be, uh, I'll be even a little more direct. And I'll just say that in general, I think it was kind of a letdown of a year. I think a lot of it was the Marvel stuff was mostly disappointing. Um, and when I looked back at the movies that made our most anticipated list at the beginning, um, A lot of them just did not live up to the hype. There were a lot of, uh, you know, kind of uh, like uh, Babylon and Triangle of Sadness and, um, you know, I mean, Tar to an extent, but Tar is better than those other ones. But, um, you know, just movies that had like really good cast and a lot of hype and were kind of like very anticipated the menu. And I just felt like a lot of them were even the Northmen, just a lot of flaws, I felt like. Uh, which is too bad. I don't have a true five star movie from this year. Um, I only I have three four and a halves, and then a bunch of fours and three and a halves. So I'd say overall kind of disappointing. Yeah, I, I'm pretty much where you guys are. Uh, I think not like a horrible. I mean, this is better than 2020, obviously. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. I think there were more good movies in 2022 than 2021, but the highs weren't quite as high for me. Mm-hmm. Um, I saw 130 movies and I have five, four and a halves and no fives. Yeah. Wow. And that's... then 15 fours and then a just shit ton of threes and three and a halves and like two and a halves. Mm-hmm. So I like there were just a lot of movies that I felt like were pretty good, but I don't necessarily need to see again. Mm-hmm. Um, it feels to me like, like there are also a lot of movies pushed back from 2022 to 2023. Um, just like Killers of the Flower Moon, we've been waiting for for a long time. The Spider Verse sequel. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. 2023 looks like an incredible group, batch of movies. Yeah. I'm, I'm hoping the pendulum for 2023 back. So yeah. um, 
I think overall a pretty mediocre year, mm-hmm. but we're listing our 10 favorites and I did not have trouble finding 10 movies that I loved. That's so fair. like the movies we're going to be talking about today are not what made this year mediocre in my opinion. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. we still have plenty of movies that we loved and we'll talk about a lot of those coming up here. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Uh, do we want to start with Adam? Yeah, I can start it off. Uh, so, right. again, we're going 10 to 1 each person. We're not going to go around the room and do our each number 10. So um, I'm just going to lay it all out. Do you guys want me to talk a little bit about you, each one or just, just number, yeah, number, man, number? You have the floor. You have the floor. Yeah. All right. Maybe say why you had it. But, you know, this is mostly to avoid us all three talking about each person's pick every single time and turning this into an hour and 20 minute episode. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and it's yeah, it's very, definitely. Deep. Yeah. Feel free to share why you loved it and why you included it. And if one of us wants to chime in, we can. But um, mm-hmm. for the most part, this is this is all you. All right. Should we put Number you in the spotlight 10. or should we should we leave it like this? Put oh, me in the spotlight. All I right. Mean, I'm the spotlight. Actually, actually, we'll say that my uh, my my room here is a little disjointed. So maybe not. Maybe we'll not fine. me. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, okay. Sure. Do, do it for you guys. You, you better, guys do it. But let me stay back yeah, here. Nice, Adam. Let me, let me stay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so my number 10, <laughs> my number 10, uh, I felt like I had to include this cause I, I really enjoyed it this year and it's a follow-up to a movie I absolutely love, uh, for the director. Uh, this is Petite Maman. Um, it's, it's short, it's cute, it's heartwarming in a way that's not overt, I guess. Uh, it's a little bit more, um, not, not overt, it's the right, not the right way. It's just a little bit more relaxed. Um, yeah. It's, it's not it's, overly it's sentimental. Yeah. That's, that's the, the best way to say that. Yeah um while being very like emotional uh and i think that was an important movie um definitely had a strange year (laughs) personally so uh, there's a lot of that kind of stuff on this list for me um but absolutely loved seeing it didn't get a chance to see it when it came out so i saw it a couple weeks later and definitely was mad at myself that i didn't see it when it came out um so that's my number 10 uh move on to number nine is one i just saw this week Uh, i finally caught up on a few things and this is uh good luck to you leo grand Nice. Uh, I'm glad you got to this. Yeah. We both thought you'd like it. Yeah, I loved it. It, It's Mm -hmm. it's so it's it's so perfect. It's it's obviously the sort the material they're talking about is uh sex between a a younger man and an older woman, Mm -hmm. but it's not about that. It's about the connection between human beings and how you can foster that and, and kind of the divide between um generations to a certain degree. Mm -hmm. Uh and you know your anxiety around certain things and why you have anxiety about those things and just how you how do you connect with other people um and it's it's an important movie for that in that regard Mm -hmm. um especially as you you know as we get kind of separated on your online communities versus getting into the world and saying the wrong thing and then somebody thinks you're an asshole forever or you know whatever Mm -hmm. it's it's connecting groups of people that don't really seem to have anything in common with each other on the surface um so I, i really really enjoyed that and and um, Emma Thompson number, killed it. Absolutely, and, and uh, I forget Dar- Daryl. Um, I forget his last McCormick? name now. McCormick, yeah, McCormick, yeah, yeah. Had never seen him before, and I was I was enraptured was with great. his performance. He was so yeah. he was so good. It was, he pl- perfectly played that like suave, but like knows what he's doing. Like his yeah. voice was perfect, and their chemistry. Mellow. Their chemistry felt like natural. Like at first, there's like no chemistry, and then as the movie goes yeah. on, they kind of actually do g- develop some. And yeah, I just warm up that a little bit to each other. Yeah, mm-hmm. and I've, I've read some trivia, and it's like they shot it all in sequence. So like as the characters get like closer together, they got closer together, like in real life, and that helped the chemistry on screen. And it was just just done very well. Mm-hmm. Um, my number eight is uh, a movie I got to a couple weeks ago that I hadn't seen because it's three hours long, and this is uh, RRR. Uh, hey. This is this is Finally. just an absolute blast. Absolute we knew you'd love it. Watch. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's it, I mean it's Bollywood, so it's a it's over the top in every imaginable way, but not High in, octane. Not, yeah, not in a <laughs> way that's not, not like, Bollywood. Yeah, what is it? It's oh, is it uh, not. It's a Tollywood movie. Oh, yeah, me. but very cool. Yeah, yeah. Well, similar, it's similar but different. Yeah. yeah. Um, I love the the bromance here uh mm-hmm. i love the music i love the action because just like you know 80s movies action were insane and kind of dumb this kind of does the same thing but in a much more like interesting way um 
there's things that defy physics there's you know all of that stuff and that's what makes it endearing uh and then at the heart of it is like a bromance between two absolute like best friends who just ideologically start off in different spots which again is connection between people um again it's three hours long so it's a little tough but uh really really loved it uh number seven is a movie i think that came out i want to say june or july i think we saw it together um I just thought this was one of the funniest movies of the year. This is Bodies, Bodies, Bodies. Nice. Um, <laughs> I, I wouldn't call this like the best movie on my list. I don't think I rated it crazy high. Maybe it's like a three and a half or a four, but it is so much fun. Mm -hmm. And it's so ridiculous. And it's such a good like takedown on those types of people and the, the culture around that stuff. And I just absolutely loved it. I want to watch it again. I've recommended it to a ton of people. I just mm -hmm. haven't gone out of my way to like find it, rent it or buy it. Um, I feel like Adam, you and I were higher on this movie than most people seemed like to be. anybody else. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I liked it. I, I don't think Dylan disliked it, but no. But Adam and I were a little higher than you were. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, I, I love that you have this time, on your list. But... I did not yeah. expect any of us to have this. So uh, awesome. It's so it's so dumb in such a comedic way. Like it's. Yeah. I think you got to throw in a movie that's not like the most serious thing of all time. Like we, mm. we, we talk about a lot of that stuff on this podcast and I think letting your hair down and, and being able to appreciate something that's just kind of stupid from time to time is it helps balance things out. And it, mm. it might be the most 2022 of all the movies, just in the way yeah. that it, like, you know, everyone's has yeah. their phones. It's all social media driven. It's all mm -hmm. like just the way it plays out. It is a thousand percent of this time. <laughs> like, yeah, for sure. very much so. <laughs> In the way that, like, Don't Look Up was very much that way of last year, you know? Yeah, kind of. Yeah, there, there's a movie that just seems to capture uh, yeah. something about the current present time. And Bodies, Bodies, Bodies definitely did that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's a lot of fun. Um, so moving on to my number six, this was a movie I, you guys weren't very high on this next one. Um, but I have read the book and I've, uh, I very much enjoy it. It's a lot more serious than Bodies, Bodies, Bodies. This was All Quiet on the Western Front. Oh, okay. um, yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. I think this is probably the best adaptation that I've seen of it. Um, mm -hmm. It does have the the detriment of not including that like final scene that's in the book of, mm -hmm. you know, them saying, uh, you know, this, uh, the, our main character dies, but the report gets called in and they say, oh, everything's fine. All quiet on the Western front. No big deal that somebody died. It's not mm -hmm. a travesty. Right. Um so it does, it does miss that, but having known that, I still felt it, um, and I still feel like this is, and it's an important movie. This is like the original War is Hell movie, and it mm, needed yeah, to be done remade. correctly. Yeah, 90 years it, later. <laughs> yeah, basically. Um, mm -hmm. And have that, it still have that personal feel. I mean, when he when he kills the uh, French soldier, he like weeps. And oh, yeah. It's such and the, an, uh, in, mm -hmm. the, in the, in the, um, in the divot or the hole or whatever. Yeah, the hole, the fox yeah. hole. Um, and it's just, it's so gut wrenching. Um, I love that it's not uh, an American war movie. I love that it's yeah. a World War One movie about like how truly terrible we have been to each other throughout mm -hmm. history. Um, mm -hmm. I think that's a reminder that has to keep happening because we're on the precipice of Russia being pieces of shit and China mm -hmm. trying to join them. So <laughs> mm -hmm. and we're not doing our, our best anyway. So um, I really love this movie. It spoke to me in a in a very deep way. Um, mm -hmm. And I, I, it, it deserves to be on this list. I'm glad it got nominated. I don't think it'll win Best Picture, but I'm glad it got nominated. It's going to win um, Best Foreign Language Film, I think. And it won the BAFTA for Best Picture, I think. Interesting. Mm -hmm. I, a lot um, of yeah, Adam, I have this in my top 20. It didn't make my top 10, but it is in okay. my top 20. And I agree. I just think it's really well made, beautiful to look at. And it's I think you have a really great uh, performance from Felix Kammerer, like pretty young, unknown actor who is asked to carry this epic yeah. war movie and i think he does a pretty damn good job <laughs> yeah i mean you gotta ask a, a younger guy to do it because everybody that was in that war was 16 17 18 you know whatever the yeah age yeah was at that time but everybody's That's a the child whole thing is they, like, that him and his buddies are like we're gonna go off to war when they're yeah they're yeah. Like kids basically and they're just so. gonna get yeah so yeah. um love that at number six uh number nice. five is a movie i've rewatched a couple times now just to try to catch myself back up on it and just see um how how good it really is and it's a, it's an actor we we all really love here uh this is the batman uh, uh yeah okay mm -hmm. so i i definitely came to appreciate this movie a little bit more upon the second and third rewatches mm -hmm. um so 
I, I if you haven't seen it again, I highly recommend going and seeing it going and seeing it again. I've seen it twice. Um, I know Nate has too. But yes, yep. to anyone out there listening, if you saw it the first time and you're like, yeah, so give it a second whatever. chance. Like Insanely. the ending is whatever, and there's some stupid stuff that happens. Like it all it all serves the point. It all serves the purpose, all serves the plot. It all makes sense thematically. So it moves so fast yeah. for how long it is. You don't feel the runtime yeah. at all. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Which is nuts. Um, and I love Robert Pattinson being a more detective, early detective focused character than just like, I'm a big guy and I'm gonna beat up all oh. the bad people. Cause that's just so indicative of like American you I know, love exceptionalism, the heroism. Yeah, their take on Batman, their version of Batman. You know, I yeah, I would take the um, um, I would take the Robert Pattinson version over the Christian Bale version. Like already, I like it more. Wow, Just, there's more going on. Like Same. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, he doesn't it's like more by the end. For sure. By the end of the of the Christian Bale trilogy, you know, it's almost parody with the way he's talking and just how <laughs> like you know like it kind of got. Whereas I feel like there's they're opening up the door for more actual like character exploration with Robert Pattinson yeah. and the way they're yeah. approaching it, which is way more interesting. He should just be a weird t loner, rich kid. Like that's yeah. a thousand percent what he should be. Not some playboy media savvy, like good looking yeah. handsome guy. Like, no, exactly. <laughs> like, yeah. Let's give him yeah, some spend him in his Alfred. Yeah. yeah he spend would him in be, Alfred just, his entire life. He's going to be weird. traumatized. <laughs> He'd just be cooped up in Wayne Manor all day. Like, yes, that's <laughs> yes. Um, but anyways, yeah, I have nothing but time and money. Like, what, mm -hmm. what are you supposed to do? Um, so really like that. Definitely go check that back out if you haven't seen it again. Um, moving on to number four is uh, something I haven't gotten a chance to rewatch, and it might bump up in, in star rating, but I really loved this the first time I saw it. This was The Banshees of Inishirin. Um, This is a, such a deeply personal movie to the people that are in it and the people that made it. And it says such an, like, it's such an important message not to the fact that like, hey, I don't want to be your friend anymore, but like the again, the connection between people and how do you how do you draw a line? How do you create boundaries? How do you like determine love between somebody? If you if you if your mind changes about something or somebody, are you allowed to change that? And how does that affect the other person? Um, a lot of those questions that get just thrown in the air and, and sort of answered because part of this movie, you just don't really have a good reason for why they're not friends. Um, it's it's a fascinating fascinating movie and i, I need to rewatch it um but i thought the imagery was beautiful the uh cinematography was fantastic just, especially because mm -hmm. it's on a fictional island but just these long sweeping shots of ireland and this this little town they live in and seeing mm -hmm. actual ireland like across the water and the war that's going on and all yeah. that was it's it's so well done and who doesn't love brendan gleason and uh colin Fer colin farrell I was yeah oh my god yeah. um They've been in a couple of my favorite movies. So like in Bruges, they get, you know, it's love seeing that, that tandem together. Colin Farrell is so freaking good in this movie. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's just really good. He's just so good. And it's, it's really fascinating seeing him go from the Yorgos character <laughs> where it's all very enunciation and lack of emotion to just like the village, nice guy, kind of doofus. Who's just like, yep. what's, what do you, why aren't we friends anymore? Like just, he just made that shit there. He's so perfect at both. Like yeah. he also was played the penguin in the Batman. And the penguin. I mean, yeah, yeah, like, like, that man, like what range dude, like yeah, yeah, unbelievable. Um, so the final three, my top three, I had a little bit of trouble determining which one did I feel was my favorite versus which one did I feel was better. Mm. If that makes sense, but yeah, this this is all about what your favorite movies of 2022 or 2022 were. So I went number three with Tar. Um, this is a hands down. Kate Blanchett wins Best Actress, or like we riot. Like this is <laughs> like she's so good in this movie, and it's such an interesting, uh, interesting take. The the scene where she yells at the the pupil that she's teaching is phenomenal. Uh, the ending is incredible despite being a little strange um there's there's so much in this movie to adore and her performance is easily i think the best of the year um it's it's unlike most things i've seen and it's, it's hard to make a movie about a conductor uh yeah the last thing i remember the conductor being like a central focus was whiplash and that's because jk simmons is bananas mm -hmm. <laughs> Um, Mr. Holland's well, opus. And that's even, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, and Whiplash is even Damn different because it. it's like a jazz band. Yeah, and it's, that's, uh, for her all of her 
uh, hoity-toity, nose in the air, high society, high art shit that she does. She's just <laughs> garbage through and through, and that's so <laughs> interesting to like latch onto and just be like, yeah, everybody can suck. Doesn't matter how cool you think you are. Um, uh, so Tar is my number three. Number two is a choice I know you guys will hate, but it's uh, everything, everywhere, all at once. Uh, <laughs> I don't hate it. I, don't hate I mean, you, I, I'm glad I definitely, I'm here. Yeah, I definitely didn't see it when all the hype was happening. So that did affect how I viewed it because I saw it a couple months later. So it kind of died down. I knew mm -hmm. that people were high on it, but I tried not to le learn anything about it or watch trailers or listen to too much of what you guys said because I know you uh, reviewed it before I was able to see it. And I just kind of stayed away from that and didn't want to know any any real details. So I kind of went in, into it with a fresh mind and ended up really, really enjoying it and then saw it again a couple of weeks later um, and kind of solidified how I felt about it. Now, they're not my favorite directors because I didn't like um, The Death of Dick Long because there's a lot of the same kind of humor that's a little like off the wall, a little gross, uh, some toilet humor that just didn't really fit for me in that movie. And it kind <laughs> of... Kind of, I think there's a lot of people who love everything, everywhere, all at once who are who would not like Death of Dick Long. I, would not <laughs> I think it's a pretty same directors, but way there's different. There's more yeah. overlap with Swiss Army Man, I think. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So. Yeah, that's fair. And I like Swiss Army Man, so it there's a there's Look, a gradient. There's a gradient. It's your number two. It's in most people's top ten. I'm fully aware that Dylan and I are kind of the weird ones on the outside mm -hmm. looking in here. We mm -hmm. don't think it's bad. No, we just don't that's think fair. it's like amazing. It's the best thing. Yeah. yeah the best right. thing since sliced bread. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and I, and I've, I've gone back and looked at my like top, um, top list of like 2020 top tw list of 2021. And with a little bit more hindsight, I've, I've gone, Oh, maybe that like number two should have been like a number four or maybe that like yeah. number seven should have been a number three. You know, I've, it, with hindsight, it can go up and down, but that at the time, those were my favorite movies of that year. And, and right now that's where this sits. Um, I just think there's so much about it that uh, the emotional part of this movie, which I will say yet again, it's about love. It's about the connection between people. And that has been, I think, hard to come by the last couple of years since COVID. People are feeling X, Y, or Z about the world and things haven't, you know, however you feel about your personal world or the world at large, I think that can that can play into play into things and how you feel about a movie. Um, at least it does for me. Um, so I think that's that's one of the important things that we got to get back to figuring out how to talk to people again who are different than us or like why don't why do you feel that way about this thing or how come you treat me this way? Whatever it happens to be, this is a mother and a daughter that are completely at odds uh, because they're going through their own shit. Uh, and I think. I think probably my favorite scene of the entire year is in this movie. Um, and I think it's probably the best scene, not even, not just my favorite, it's the best scene. And it's when they are rocks. And that is mm -hmm. absolutely the best visual, the best, everything is that scene bar none. Um, it's, it, it says so much without saying anything. Uh, it's just spoiler silence. for that's a spoiler for the movie talk awards. We know what Adam's best scene is going to be. Uh, what did you call those awards, Dylan? The Speak, Film, and Enter Awards. <laughs> <laughs> the, the the podcast formerly known as. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so now building up to my number one, which if you are following the show, uh, this is the only five-star movie I think we gave this entire year. Uh, oh, yeah. This is, this is Marcel the Shell with shoes on. Um, this is, mm -hmm. it is everything to me. Uh, in, in the way that certain movies speak to you on a personal level in a way that you didn't think was possible. Um, mm -hmm. Certain certain forms of art just hit you in a way that you were like, oh, I didn't realize I, I needed that. Uh, that's what Marcel the Shell was this year. Um, I don't want to say too much more about it because I just think it, it deserves to be seen. Um, mm -hmm. I've told a lot of people to watch it and I've told a lot, like even like my group at soccer, like just random groups of people. Um, and a lot of people are like, oh, I don't want to see that. Like, I don't care. It's like, but but you should. It it deserves to be seen. It go watch the five minute YouTube video from ten years ago. And like, I hated that when it came out. I loved this movie in a way that I didn't think I was going to. Um, so that that's it. There's there's a lot on here that's just kind of all over there the board. Is. But I think it's awesome. the ones that speak to me the most, and and that that's where we have. So Marcel no, like is it. number a, one. It's a wide collection of tastes. I think it's it's a really good top ten. 
Yeah, yeah. I, I feel like I have like not eclectic taste. I feel like I, I see some really good stuff and I see some really dumb stuff that I'm like, oh, perfect. Like that's right up my alley. So yeah, yeah. it's just, mm -hmm. that's how it goes. That's how it goes. I try to be the everyman. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, all right. So over to me. Uh, and I, I had forgotten about Petite Maman because it's under 2021 on Letterboxd and whatnot. Ah, so yes. adding that to my uh, list of movies that I watched from 2022, I watched 64. 2022 movies in this uh film year you could uh, make a perfect ncaa tournament bracket with those. I, right <laughs> i know <laughs> um next episode it's all me for two yeah. hours um <laughs> still an agonizing down. over yep <laughs> over seeding on versus the northman yeah <laughs> um but yeah, so I did not have any five star movies. I only had three, four and a half movies. So my top three was easy in that regard, uh, yep. at least what they were. Um, and then, yeah, a fair amount of a decent amount of fours, like maybe 15. And then and then after that, just a deluge of three and a halfs and threes. Um, so we will start at number 10. This is a movie that I actually rewatched last night uh, because I was really torn on what my number 10 would be. Uh, spoiler, it was between After Sun and this movie, and this movie just barely edged it out, and that is Cha-Cha Real Smooth. Okay. Uh, right. we, reviewed, uh, we reviewed this earlier in the year, so you can go back and check it out. Um, it's just, like, for one, it's entertaining. After Sun is great and beautiful and well-made, but, like, I, I enjoyed watching Cha-Cha Real Smooth. I just, it's, it's, it's very entertaining. Um, I, I like the characters. I'm a real sucker for uh, movies where one guy wrote it, directed it and stars in it. And that's the case uh, with this one with Cooper Rafe. And um, the second time I watched it, you know, I had heard and read reviews. A lot of people think it's overly sentimental, sappy. The main character is kind of, you know, at least outwardly, like way too wholesome. And there's a lot of kind of like eye roll moments like, OK, like, right. And, and then you think about how he wrote it mm -hmm. and directed it. So it can seem very self-serving. And if, if that's what you get from it, I I understand. But moments that came up where I even thought, like, I feel like a lot of people roll their eyes at that. I didn't for some reason, this one doesn't bug me. I don't know what it is. It's just kind of maybe a guilty pleasure for me. But I, I just I just had a good time. I just I, I was I, I think the, the comedy is really strong. And I also just think it speaks specifically to like people our age um it just seems like i related to it a lot um throughout so yeah uh, i think dylan there's an earnestness to this yes. movie that you just can't really deny like he doubles down on it and leans into this earnest character so much that yes. you can't really at a certain point you just need to kind of appreciate it i think yeah, it feels like almost kind of a throwback to like movies from like the 40s or 50s where the character main character would be overly earnest and yeah. good. It's and kind of like, this is what I like, want. Yeah, and, and gonna... the audiences were like, no one's actually like that. And now it's fast forward to 2023. And this movie seems so different because Cooper Rafe is like, no, I my character is going to be like that. This is my whole thing. And it, we're just we're really leaning into the earnestness and the kindness. But it it becomes a part an important part of his character growth and arc and that's why i think that works so well also Me too. dakota johnson's in this and i think she is phenomenal yeah. in pretty much everything she's in yeah dakota yeah. johnson is great cooper rafe is great and then um as lola vanessa burghardt uh, as the uh, autistic yes. uh, daughter of dakota johnson's character who is actually autistic in real life she did a fantastic job yep. um yeah just terrific all around also leslie mann is his mom their dynamic and the way they talk <laughs> to each other and interacted i just thought was great brad um, garrett yeah, and Brad Garrett. Oh my God, the 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 like the lines he would mm -hmm. drop to Brad Garrett just great, like yeah. lame stepdad lines. Like, mm -hmm. it's just, it's, um, all right. So moving on. So yeah, number ten, Cha Cha, real smooth. If you think it's overly earnest, I'm, I'm sorry, I get it, but I I like it. Uh, <laughs> on to number nine. Definitely uh, one that I uh, I did not expect, but you liked it, Nate, and I finally gave it a chance, and that is Pearl. The oh, uh, interesting. The Mia I didn't think it was going to be this high. Yeah, I didn't think it was going to be in your either. top ten. I'm, I'm surprised. Me either. Yeah, the the Mia Goth uh, T West collaboration, the prequel to X. Um, I just think it's just got this. It's just got this in your face, like kind of grungy throwback energy that, like, they kind of captured in X, but I feel like they really refined it for Pearl. 
Um, and I just think Mia Goth right now is just in the zone. She just is like captivating to look at. The end credit scene was fantastic. I mean, the the you know the hor- the horror parts of this are pretty horrifying. Like one scene yeah. in particular uh, in the driveway, I was like, dang! Like that's when I was like, this movie gets it. Like this is like this is the type of like it's not super psychological and necessarily like smart horror the way that you know maybe hereditary or midsummer is it's more of a throwback we're like oh no like this chick is just gonna go crazy and like start killing people because she's stuck in this small town and that's enough if you can pull it off and i just thought they did so yeah pearl pearl my number nine just could not take it out of the top 10 uh just the audacity of those two and i'm excited for for their next projects yeah um moving on to number eight uh a movie that a thousand percent feels like it was made for a teenage me. And that is hustle. Sorry. I'm sorry, Nate. I know it's so predictable and like shallow and just like typical (laughs) sports movie, but it's like my typical sports movie. It's like, yeah, it's like if they, if there was like a paint by numbers sports movie and, (laughs) and I was 15 I would have filled in almost all the same stuff except for Adam Sandler. Cause I didn't really like Adam Sandler just cause I thought he was really goofy and wacky at this point. Yeah. I hadn't seen any of his serious roles. So 15 year old me might've picked a different lead actor, but other than that, yeah. I mean the music, the real players that are in it, the Timberwolves connections with a former player yep. as the main character and a current player as like the villain who's awesome as the villain. Yeah. I just, yeah. this whole movie is just, it's just awesome. I just, I had a great time and just the way that it feels tailor made for, for me and like how I just really loved basketball, you know, back in the day. And I, I still do to an extent. I don't follow it as much as I used to, but yeah, it just felt like a throwback, the soundtrack, everything. I loved it. So Two that was surprises my, already from Dylan, I think. That was my number eight. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah moving on to number this seven. Is one. This is like one of those, like what I call like a middle of the road movie that just like absolutely knocked it out of the park and is just like perfect at what it wants to be. Yeah, it's never going to, you know, I'm probably never going to bump it up to a five star movie or anything, no. but I just feel like, I don't know, I would have no problem re- rewatching this whenever, years from now, you know, and mm-hmm. I'm at some family thing. They're like, oh, have you seen? Yeah, I'll watch that. You know, you know, yeah, the main character used to play for the Timberwolves. <laughs> um, that incredible actor who's playing the villain is on the Timberwolves <laughs> right now. And he's amazing. <laughs> yeah, um, it's just great. All right. So moving on to number seven, this is a movie that I watched uh, very recently when I was trying to uh, catch up and just knock all sorts of 2022 movies that I didn't get to. This was one that Nate highly recommended, and I'm so glad he did. And that is Hit the Road. Yes. Yeah, just yes. incredibly well made, well acted, uh, just a great road trip take on a road trip movie. Um, it's yeah, it's it's like Little Miss Sunshine, but like kind of deeper and darker, <laughs> like not yeah. like, but yeah. still like funny and like totally relatable and just the way the family members play off each other, the performances and specifically, um, we, you know, we mentioned this cause we talked about it in the roundup. If you want to go back to that, it was one of my favorite new watches, uh, just the director and the cinematography, his confidence in having these really long shots where the camera's just in one place. And really all you're doing is watching a conversation or an action that the characters are taking or, and you're just soaking it all in and his decision of when to do those and how to do those just, uh, really like he knows what he's doing and I would bet there's big things in the future uh, from, from him. Uh, and that sure. is just before I forget, that is a Pana Panahi. Um, I loved, there's a, there's a shot towards the end where it's like you know, the camera is probably what 50 yards away and you're just seeing basically like silhouettes move around and like there's, oh, there's yep. dialogue. You can hear like yelling and stuff, but you're not so, getting like every bit and you're just watching what's happening. And mm-hmm. that in and of itself is fascinating and just so, so well done. Yeah incredible especially after most of the movie you've been in these tight quarters in this car Mm -hmm. so it's a lot of close-ups a lot of close-ups and he's like i'm just gonna let this moment breathe and he just backs it way up beautiful background sun setting it's just yeah so good so you have seen this adam and i'm surprised it didn't make it okay it's just outside okay just outside so honorable mention yeah Mm -hmm. yeah no i definitely highly recommend hit the road uh, taking a hard left, my number six is about as big as you can get, and that is Top Gun Maverick. Uh, you know, what is there to say that hasn't already been said? It, single-handedly saving movie theaters, really the whole entire <laughs> movie industry, really the entire Western, you know, Western culture, really. This movie <laughs> just, it saved us from the abyss. And so Steven for- Spielberg told Tom Cruise that he saved 
the movies. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> because Tom Cruise's head isn't big enough already. I know, he needs we're going to get to the Oscars and we're going to get a standing ov- ovation whenever Tom Cruise walks on stage just to be like, thank you, Tom. When we'll he walks on. Because of you. Maybe. They kind of hate him, accept, though. When he walks right? on to accept the award for best picture, you mean? <laughs> Bold um, prediction. <laughs> we'll see. Just the way the movie yeah. industry loves it. Um, right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but no, I... I mean, just really well made. Great time at the movies. Those scenes in the air are incredible. Takes the elements of the first one and just improves on pretty much all of them. Uh, yeah, Tom Cruise, he brings it. Um, and it's just entertaining. And on rewatch, it was just as entertaining. Did not, did not, you know, ascend to a five or anything, but just a solid movie. Like I, I did there. Like I, oh yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, didn't, didn't put into overdrive. Or whatever. Adam's gonna leave. Adam's gonna leave. Yeah. Turn on the afterburners and really. Yeah. No. This um. <laughs> this analogy is falling apart. I'm gonna hit the eject button. Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> Actually, this I'm really amazing. in trouble. I might need you guys to, to rescue. <laughs> might need a wingman to help me out of this situation. <laughs> uh, anyways, um, yeah, just great time. Uh, everybody seems to love it, and just a, a good thing that it came out. It was as big as it was, and that he waited to release it so that it could be in theaters and not during yes. the pandemic. Really great decision there. Um, so yeah, there are my uh, six through 10 moving on to my top five, Adam, me and you were in the same boat. Number five, the Batman. It's nice. just, you know, I would have thought that the Batman world had just been beaten to death and that we really needed a break. And I think originally when the trailers came out, I think that was kind of the impression or like how I, how I viewed it. I was like, Oh my God, do we really need another Batman? Like, can <laughs> we just her. chill for a second? But like we mentioned, when you had your number five, they just found a way to make it fresh and way more grounded and way more seems like, um, I don't know, character driven, true to the comics. We're, we're peeling away layers of something of Gotham, of Batman himself, of his family history. And that is more interesting. That's the direction that they need to go instead of the bigger, grander. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Let's just get Christopher Nolan, you know, crazy action set pieces. In this one, it was like, no, like we're going to create a very realistic feeling Gotham City. And you're going to spend a lot of times driving around the streets and just like creeping around in the dark. And like, and that's cool. And that's, and like, I just thought that was really well done. So yeah, kudos to everyone involved in that. Like we mentioned, um, Colin Farrell kills it. Zoe Kravitz kills it. Um, Pattinson kills it. It's just, it's just a great, Paul Dano, Paul Dano. Paul Dano, Dano. Yes. Jeffrey Wright, the eternally un- underappreciated Paul Dano. Um, yes. Jeffrey really Wright, love, really love this version of the Batmobile. So that's that's another what? thing. Oh yeah, I thought that was cool too. Yeah, and even the just his gadgets and his vehicle and everything felt so much more low tech and more homemade. Yeah, which it was nice. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was a good change. So yeah, there's my number five, the Batman. I just could not justify dropping it lower. It's just, it's just, yeah, it's, it's just solid. It. Well done. Yeah. And, you know, a hint at I know the Joker's been done to death, too, but a hint at Barry Kogan's Joker and the way he's doing. He might take home an Oscar this year. Kind of getting excited for that, dare I say. It's been done so much, but God dang. Um, All right. So moving on. Number four, another movie that Adam had as well, and that is RRR. Just nice. the absolute uh, high adrenaline fun explosion of the year. <laughs> that just, like, yeah, I mean, you just can't. How can you watch this and not smile? I don't. I don't know how. Yes. And this is it's it's three hours long, but it's interesting because this is a movie that I feel like if I was hanging out with somebody and they only had an hour and a half, I'd be like, I'll watch the first hour and a half with you right now. And if they only had forty five minutes, I'd, I'd be like, I'll watch the first forty five minutes. And even <laughs> yeah. if they only had like twenty minutes, I'll be like, I'll watch the first scene when he goes into the crowd to get that guy like yeah I just want to, yeah like, oh my god that scene yeah you want to experience with other people it just it's yeah. something about it i wish i wish i could have seen this in the theaters if, if you if we could see this if it ever comes around really yeah it's playing in minneapolis again like this week i know at least it's playing on the ninth oh my I think god playing right now i mean we could go see this literally tonight or tomorrow or wow let's get yeah. let's get a group together let's let's yeah. absolutely i think that would be really fun i got it i mean let's go squad at least the first hour and a half 
Uh, <laughs> yeah. The second half isn't the, right. The second half isn't quite as good as the first half, but the first half is like a damn near five star action movie. I mean, it's yeah. it's incredible. They gotta they gotta circle up with all the crazy shit they did in the first half. They're like, all right, we'll we'll actually get get some resolution and stuff for you. So here it is, but it's not going to be as fun. <laughs> yeah, and one of the best bromance movies to come out in a long time too. Absolutely. For sure. Oh man, it's like Fantastic. a buddy cop movie, but not. Cops. Mm-hmm. Like, <laughs> and now uh, we get to my top three. We finally make the jump into the four and a halfs. And the first one is number three, Marcel, the shell with shoes on. Just, I mean, it just yeah. so unique, so beautiful and clever and funny and just unlike anything I've ever seen and uh, was blown away when we saw it in theaters. Cannot wait to rewatch it. Recommend it for pretty much anybody. I mean, it just it is what it is. You just got to check it out. <laughs> just, I think it's the most yeah. universally like the widest appeal of any movie this year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't yeah. think of a yeah. single person I would not recommend this movie to. <laughs> yeah. yeah, seriously. You can see it. Parents can see it. I would say old people, but like my parents would see it. Like my only thirty somethings can see it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. like, like, our, dem- our demographic yeah. is it's right in the sweet right. spot. <laughs> yeah. mm-hmm. Middle schoolers can see it. You know, yeah, young. And I mean, still you can it. appreciate it. You can appreciate it at pretty much any age, like yeah, yeah. very basic themes of family and, you know, finding your place in the world. Just good stuff. Just real good Honey stuff. On the shoes. Yep. And now oh, we get to the top two and this top two, uh, it was a very late change. And uh, part of this had to do with, well, we'll explain it when we get there. My did number me? two. Yeah, it might, I think it did. <laughs> Nate. My number two favorite movie of the year is the Banshees of Inishirin. Um, I rewatched this uh, two nights ago and it is fantastic. It is, I mean, like we already mentioned, the acting is great. The writing is great. The whole concept of the island and how it's all like a lot of it is allegory for the Irish civil war and generational differences. It just, it feels so timeless. It feels literally like it's telling just a story about human beings and human nature and not anything and more in particular than that kind of the way that some Kurosawa films feel and just like, yeah, it just yeah. exists. It's just, it's just this timeless kind of fable almost. Um, yeah. There's something I like, I like to use for kind of stuff like this, that j- it feels like it's always existed. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes. It existed before yeah. us and it will yep. exist after us like this story. Like McDonough just finally like, wrangled it and <laughs> yeah. he found the story not yet mm-hmm. yeah it's kind of floating Absolutely. out there somewhere yeah no 100 percent. and i just i and i would pretty much recommend this for everybody i just think you know every character there's different you see different sides of them and you see how this type of thing can happen not necessarily out of malice but it can quickly become malice because you know really you know the one guy he just he's having trouble grappling with his own mortality and he's depressed about that. And in some ways you can totally relate to why he just wants some alone time and doesn't, and wants to spend his time otherwise, but he goes about it in such a harsh, mean way that almost nobody can deny is a little bit mean. And then, so that sets off. So then like chain reaction. Now you have another guy who feels like for no reason, he just like lost a friend and it's just all these very like basic human emotion, human interaction things that are just so like, well, like woven together. Um, The scene when he finally just like shouts at him in the bar. Oh, great. I mean, both scenes where he shouts at him in the bar, the first scene where he shouts at him at the bar kind of towards the middle when he's really drunk. And then the second scene towards the end, when he shouts at him at the bar, both of those are fantastic. I mean, just incredible acting, incredible movie making. So yeah, number two for me, Banshees of Inishirin. Absolutely loved it. Um, really funny too. God, like the, yeah. the Irish mm-hmm. wit and the banter and the just some of the line deliveries are just so fantastic. The dinner scene when Barry Hogan's character is there <laughs> and he just keeps yeah. asking more and more uncomfortable questions. The line yeah. about like, I'm not going to put my donkey outside when I'm sad. Like, yeah. So <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. man. So good. Um, so, but it's a pony, isn't it? Um, oh, yeah. It is a, oh, yeah. I think it is. Is it a pony or is it a donkey? Because and want to say it's it a, a donkey, pony. but I don't remember. God, no, I, I think mean, I haven't goes, it, so. earlier in the movie. He goes, you know, you spoke my ear off for two hours about the shite that your little pony had, 
And then he was like, well, it's not a little pony. It's a donkey. And that shows how much you were listening for those two. Right. Yep. Yep. <laughs> I'm the one who screwed that up. Apologies. It's okay. And he's a donkey. It's you okay. gave us a good moment, Nate. <laughs> yeah. Um, but so I rewatched this uh, two nights ago and I was spurred on because um, Nate finally rewatched the movie that has become my number one and his changing opinion of it, which vindicated <laughs> me for my all time speak film and enter rant on the Nope review episode, which you can go look up right now. My number one is Nope. It, 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 it ascended from number two to number one when Nate wow. watched it a second time and it clicked for him. I felt so justified. Nate's one sentence review or two sentence review that it finally clicked for him and that Jordan Peele is like the best, maybe my favorite review of all time. It just made me so happy. And then what is I, it? What is it? And that exact same that exact same night, I was like, I need to rewatch. Like, maybe that is number one. And I was like, I'm gonna rewatch Banshees of Inisherin. I'm gonna give it a chance to hold on to the number one spot. I'm gonna give it a chance because I've already seen Nope twice, and I I love it. I know why I love it. So I was like, all right, I'm gonna give Banshees. And I loved Banshees on rewatch, but it just it just couldn't hold on. It just couldn't hold on. The rush that I got when I realized that Nate had changed his tune. <laughs> I was just like this movie, God dang! Uh, I, yeah, I'll I'll talk the whole episode away. So I'll just say that I absolutely love it. I love the way it's all put together, the concept, the execution. The characters are a little more thin than Jordan Peele's other work, but I just think what he's trying to do and kind of the idea behind it is so bold, and the way he goes about it is so bold and visually crazy that I'm into it. I just I really like it. I would I uh, yeah I would happily happily watch this again pretty much any time. I am a, a Nope stan officially. Uh, my number one movie of the year, uh, Jordan Peele's Nope. Adam, are you looking up my little just like two? I have it right here. <laughs> the review from though. Nate. <laughs> Second time's a charm for me. Loved it. Oh, my heart is singing. Oh, okay. I I thought it was Daniel. Be more like... No, Daniel Kaluuya is one of the best. In the... Okay, Daniel Kaluuya is one of the best in the game. Yeah. Yeah. Not Jordan Peele. Okay. But yeah, Second Time's a Charm for me. Loved it. Daniel Kaluuya is one of the best in the game. Oh, my gosh. That's a great moment in Speak Film I mean... and Enter History right there. <laughs> I'm gonna I print it. I'm gonna print gonna that to, and put so. it on a little plaque and a little frame on my desk. T-shirt on the back. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna make yeah magnets, <laughs> refrigerator <laughs> magnets in that review, so I can put see it in it your background. Morning. Yeah, so I can see screen. it every morning and go <laughs> like <laughs> <laughs> he came around. Yeah. Oh man, I did incredible. So yep, there you go. That's my number one. Nope. And uh, if you want to hear more about it, feel free to listen to our review episode of it. Uh, few months back or whenever it came out so my turn your turn take it away nate take us uh down the home stretch well um i had a very set nine for a long time and so this year i ended up with five four and a halfs and 15 fours okay but really there were probably 10 of the four star movies that i was considering for the last five spots um finally had them all set except for uh number 10 and then two nights ago i rewatched nope thinking like it's got the highest ceiling possible of any of the movies i could rewatch that yeah. i don't have up here yet because i've yeah. rewatched all the fours yep and i fucking loved this movie and yes. it made it all the way <laughs> to number 10 yes. which i do want to talk about this really quick though the poster, talk about it the poster has nope in all caps, but like other places just have it as a word. I have no idea if it's, I've seen that it's an acronym. I have no idea. Yeah. True I've fans seen like Dylan have it apps, So just. <laughs> I'm not at the four and a half level yet. That's when you start yeah. typing with all caps. Okay. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> well, I got to get, I got to catch back up then. So. Yeah. I did not really care for this the first time. It was more that like, there were so many different, he's spinning so many different wheels mm -hmm. and they didn't connect for me. It felt like kind of two separate things that didn't really come together. Mm -hmm. And then because of that, it just sort of the characters didn't work for me either. Mm -hmm. And I just felt kind of cold and a little confused when it was over and I rewatched it and everything clicked and it made the characters better. It made everything better. Mm -hmm. And I, think it's great it there's nothing else like it either and it's nice to just now all of jordan peele's movies are three and a half four and a four and a half for me instead of like one four and a half and then like two that i think are like 
Okay. You know? Good, but not yeah, great. yeah. Yeah, because there's only three, it gets mm-hmm. to like two out of the three of them now, I think are great. And I think us is pretty good. So but... this passed this surpassed us now on second on second viewing for you? Absolutely. Okay. Nice. nice. So number ten is nope. Number nine, uh also on Adam's list, and that is tar. Oh. Um, Dylan, I think Adam and nice. I need to sit you down and have a long talk about this movie. You got the apostrophe yeah. in. That's because I just Adam copied it from Letterboxd <laughs> yeah, and pasted not. it, which I, I only thought to do, Adam, Adam because you did that when we reviewed this movie. Oh, did I? <laughs> yes. <laughs> did, couldn't be bothered this time, though. I went <laughs> top three of the movie this of this year and just was like, fuck it. I'll yeah. just type it out. He's using the tricks <laughs> against you. Yeah, just an all-time performance from Kate Blanchett. And this is a movie that I think... I mean, really, this and Nope, I think, are probably the two most ambitious and highest aiming movies I saw this year. Mm. Um, Tar, I think the first two hours of Tar is maybe the best movie of the year. I don't love the third act. It doesn't, like, I don't think it's bad. Yeah. You know, but it knocks it down from, like, a top three movie to me to, like, the bottom part of the top ten. Just mostly because of one moment that I don't think works really at all but this is a great movie and a great performance and it tackles something that is huge in our culture right now in a in an interesting way with an interesting perspective and it doesn't just offer the audience one side or the other or take any it it doesn't cut any corners yeah it's just fantastic and Kate Blanchett is one of my favorites of all time she's one of the greatest actresses of all time I think I don't know. It's between her and Michelle Yeoh, and Michelle Yeoh won at SAG. Yeah. So I don't know. Um, it's really 50 50 for me on that right now. I, I mean, I like both of them a lot. So I'm not going to be upset either way, but I do think Blanchett gave the better performance. That's where I'm at. I think Michelle Yeoh might take it, but yeah. I, I, I mean, I would she, give they're, it both, to they're both deserving. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. But for Absolutely. me, Blanchett is like the, like, Blanchett's performance is this movie. Absolutely. It's the it's unbelievable yeah. how good she is in this movie. So and I have another potential surprise here at number eight, which goes a little against what I usually have in my top ten lists, and that is the bad hey. 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 wow. no. no, like it. Like it. Mm-hmm. Um yeah, because you weren't that high on it, I believe. I liked I mean I gave it a three and a half the first time. Yeah. Um, and like Dylan and probably like you too, Adam just thought like, do we need another Batman movie? I'm also lower on the Nolan trilogy than most people and was just so yeah. Batman out. So the fact like second watch on this absolutely loved it. It's so rewatchable. And for me, the biggest thing is the noir angle and the fact that for me, Batman, I mean, outside of the like fun zaniness of the Adam West sixties, Batman stuff, which is its own thing and totally yeah. separate. Yeah. It, nobody's tried to do it like that again, and nobody ever will. It's just kind of this little time capsule that I love. <laughs> so fantastic. But it's it's separate from all the other Batman stuff. Yeah. Outside of that, for me, the best version of Batman has always been the 90s animated series. Mm. And this, to me, finally felt like the live action version of the 90s animated series that I had been sort of waiting for my entire life without realizing mm. it. Mm-hmm. So I think this it's is like great. the early I, version of, of that, like the early version, like early Batman version of the animated series, because like he's he's been Batman in that for a very long time. I oh, like. yeah, yeah, yeah. I just mean like the tone of it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And the look and the feel and like the way the characters kind of come together and the way and how alive Gotham feels. Uh, mm-hmm. it, yeah, I think it's great. Um, I still need to get my dad to watch this because it is so okay. long. And oh, he, yeah. like us, was kind of like, we don't need another one. But. Get to it, Brian. I'm going to sit him down one of these days and we're going to watch the Batman. I lucked out. I saw this in theaters with my dad. Nice. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe the part of the reason I like it so much, too. We had a great time. (laughs) So probably done with the surprises now. I think seven through one are going to be pretty vintage Nate top classic Nate. (laughs) Fucking classic Nate. Um, Banshees of Inishirin at number seven. There we go. Nice. Just great movie. You guys have mm-hmm. both brought it up already. We've discussed what makes it fantastic. It's, it's just great. Just, yeah. Um, deserved every nomination it got and Colin Farrell. And uh, um, I clicked on the wrong one here. I forget her name. Carrie Condon? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Carrie Condon. She won Best Supporting Actress at the BAFTAs. She would be my pick for that. 
I mm -hmm. wow. don't think she really has much of a chance at winning, but she's, no. am she's amazing. So Every good. Everything about this movie is great. Yeah. Yeah. And then number six, Adam, I thought this would be on yours. Oh. A little surprised it wasn't, but I've got decision to leave. Oh, I completely <laughs> forgot about this. <laughs> Fuck. Oh. <laughs> well, oh, no. We'll do oh, honorable no. mentions at the end, and you can Son tell us bitch. maybe where you would have put it. But uh, decision to leave from director uh, Park Chan-wook. Uh, it feels like to me there's at least one Korean movie every year that I love. And mm -hmm. this year, it's Decision to Leave. Just a really great kind of modern reimagining of Vertigo, basically. Yeah. yeah. Uh, just really well done. Beautiful to look at. Uh, surprisingly funny. Amazing performances. The two leads here are fantastic. Mm -hmm. And it has an ending that I still haven't fully wrapped my head around yet, but not in a bad way. Yeah. You know, I, know what you mean. Like it, I didn't fully, kind of, I didn't comment, fully get I it, but I enjoyed it. Like I exactly. Yeah. It. And it's, it, for me, it's just kind of like, it just means, oh, I guess I'm going to have to rewatch it again. Yep. And that's fine. It's the best yeah. movie nobody saw this year for sure. Like, I think it's, it's up funny. there. It's funny, Adam, because the you you had the reason you forgot about it. I feel like is because you had copied my letterbox list of the top twenty twenty two movies, but I had also forgotten to put it there, and I only <laughs> I only added it like a week ago, and yep. so I you, so that's exactly what so since I mind, forgot. Just, you by oh. extension forgot. <laughs> God damn! I'm like distraught that I forgot. I know where it goes. We'll like, circle back nice around. You can decide where you would put it, and then we'll come back around. <laughs> Adam, this uh, is how I felt when I forgot to include Let the Right One In in my top five yeah, winter movies. Yeah. <laughs> that was good. Yeah. It's like how despair and embarrassment. Yeah. I've embarrassed myself. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> all right. Uh, number five for me, so this is in all of our top fives, is Marcel the Shell with Shoes On. Nice. Um, beautiful, beautiful movie. And so creative. That's part yeah, of it yeah. for me, too, is just – the creativity behind how these shells live in the house and how they move around and how they like get food and just the way they do things yeah. is fascinating. And then to add the heartfelt family story on top of that, it all works for me here. And we're into the four and a halfs now, by the way. So Mar okay, starting yeah. with Marcel, the shell shoes on mm -hmm. the rest of these are all at four and a half. Um, number four, Adam, you had on yours as well. And that is petite maman. Uh, just a, beautiful movie i read recently an interview with celine siamo where she said um a lot of ghibli movies were a big inspiration for this and she okay. even initially thought that this could maybe be or should maybe be animated okay i can see that for sure but see that too. she ended up doing live action which i really like it's a beautiful looking movie and mm -hmm. just very subtle and sweet and compact it's like an hour and mm -hmm. ten 15 like minutes, minutes I think, hour and 17 like minutes and it's on hulu i mean it, highly highly recommend it is in french you got subtitles so you're gonna have to read a little bit Deal but, with uh, America. yeah exactly <laughs> this is just a beautiful movie mm -hmm. uh and i then, could totally see it being animated like in the style of wolf walkers uh, yeah, yeah. Like that style yeah, very be, yeah, gorgeous. Mm -hmm, handwritten colorful fall colors for sure yep and then number three these top three for me are like an easy top three as well. I have these all at four and a half, but uh, this the top three are kind of tier one. Uh, number three is After Sun. After watching this a second time, so Dylan, you and I reviewed this. We did both, and really we, bo really we both did. mentioned in the review how this could go up on a rewatch. Yes, and I watched mm -hmm. it a second time, and it absolutely did. Just kind of once you know where it's going, all the little things you're able to pick up on, just mm -hmm. these small seemingly insignificant but incredibly important character moments between this dad who's our age and his 11 year old daughter uh just a beautiful movie uh one of the best depictions of depression i've seen in a movie in a really really long time as well mm -hmm. so loved it i love that uh paul mescal ended up with uh that fifth Best actor nomination. More people need to know who this yeah. guy is. Agreed. Agreed. Yeah. And this was my number 11. I also really, really liked it and would yep. recommend it for anybody who's who's in the mood for some real heartfelt human emotion stuff. <laughs> like, yep. Like, <laughs> Speaking of real heartfelt human emotion, human emotion stuff, stuff. 
Uh, number two, we have women oh, yeah. talking. These are the two uh, movies, movies I haven't gotten to, so I'm just I'm so upset that like they're so yeah, high. Like, so much um, shame for you, Adam, in these last ten minutes. God, women talking <laughs> is <laughs> women talking is probably the most I've connected to a movie on an emotional level since uh, Portrait of a Lady on Fire. Ooh. I think so. Phenomenal performances. I mean, I think Jamie Lee Curtis is good in everything ever all at once but the fact that i don't know i like somebody from this movie needed to be nominated for best supporting actress you could yeah. pick like three four or five different people and that might be why no one person did mm -hmm. still but an incredible ensemble cast the performances are fantastic and this for me i'm well aware that this is based on very true events and these types of things happen Mm -hmm. But one of the reasons I like this so much is the way the story is set is it's framed in a way that for the same reason that I love dystopian science fiction, which is mm -hmm. that it's a genre that allows us to simultaneously see what collapsed our society and then choose how we want to build a better one. Mm -hmm. and women talking yeah. is a very real story about that mm -hmm. and the second time i saw this i saw it with my parents and it was like i think five days after my grandpa had died so i was just kind of like emotions were yeah. just kind of up toward the surface at that point i was like teary-eyed from 30 seconds into this movie all the way through yeah it's pretty that's pretty high praise i don't think and i've ever seen <laughs> Just to not intimidate Adam too much, this is also surprisingly funny at times. Mm -hmm. yeah, okay. and, I mean, it's going to be some music. banter, right? That's got to be. Yeah, like, and the, the music is really good. There are moments that make this stay light on its feet at times because the characters are trying to process things. And yeah, you can't get wrong. They need to make jokes. It. Yeah. Yeah. So, Women Talking, number two. And then number one, this was on Dylan's list as well. Uh, I have not been more impressed by a movie this year, and that is Hit the Road. Yeah. That Iranian movie that nobody's heard of and was nominated for nothing and is just <laughs> sitting on Showtime right now some for some reason. Ugh. Uh, this movie, is, I mean, you kind of said it earlier. It's like sort of like Little Miss Sunshine, but like about more important or like larger things. Yeah. yeah. And it has a political angle. The brilliance of this movie is not telling us where they're going or why. Yes. Yeah. And the fact that mm -hmm. they're able to pull that off and you get the bickering family. It's really funny at times. Um, it's got this very like heavy <laughs> political tones to it, but they're just kind of there and nobody mm -hmm. really wants to look at it too much. Yeah. Also because the younger kid in the car, they don't want to tell him where they're going either. So or we why? don't get yeah. told as yeah. well uh there are like f at least three scenes in this movie that are among the best of the year you mentioned yeah. uh the one where the camera is just still and it's just like chaos mm -hmm. and you're watching people from afar and then a scene like two scenes after that with the dad and the six-year-old where they're kind of laying on the ground next to the campfire yeah, yeah. And he's, he's trying to kind of calm him down and reassure him and comfort him and it turns into this thing where like eventually they're just kind of floating through space yeah like in the song and it has and that stuff. perfect level of humor and the dad the actor playing the dad gives has the delivery of like when you have a sleepover with your friends in like high school or middle school and you're all really really tired but you're having too good of a time to go to sleep so you get this sort of weird level of like nobody's moving but everybody's kind of being really funny yeah slap happy. There. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> slap he, happy yeah yeah he has like that delivery like he mm. doesn't even move he's just like stretched out like a starfish yeah, with his kid laying on his stomach, and mm -hmm. it's so funny. He talks about Batman, actually, coincidentally. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and the fact that this was a debut, which After Sun is as well, but there are some things here that he does, like the level of confidence and craft with this movie is stunning to mm -hmm. me. I, I cannot believe that this is the first movie this guy's directed. <laughs> yeah, I mean, his father is Jafar Panahi, who's probably the most celebrated Iranian director of the la of our lifetime. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, it's a, it's a yeah. nice so he, <laughs> right. Probably had a pretty good teacher, but still, 
I mean, this movie is just stunning and definitely the best movie I saw this year. Hell yeah. Absolutely. I, I, yeah. I love that pick as number one. Um, and then just before we wrap it up, uh, let's just each go and run through our top 10 one more time. Oh, wait. Oh, yeah. Or actually, no. Or do we want to start with honorable mentions? Let's get into honorable let's, mentions. Let's... Okay. Okay. All right, Adam, um, you want to go first? Yeah. So uh, I'm going to start with where I would have put uh, Decision to Leave. Um, <laughs> I actually think I would have removed Bodies, 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 throw, thrown that at number like 11 and thrown it at number 7. Uh, okay. Oh, me. just a swap. Um, yeah, just Hot a swap. straight swap. swap. Hot yeah. swap. Um, but, uh, I also had a uh, Top Gun Maverick was just outside. Um, for me, I had, uh, Pinocchio, uh, Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio was yep. just outside. That's at 16 um, for me. Yep. Uh, that's basically what I had. Uh, I'm trying to look at my list right now. Um, not too much else. There's obviously a bunch of movies I enjoyed, but didn't love. So like, like we talked about at the beginning. So was that's, on the count of three really that, close for you. Oh, and yeah, and on the count of three, because I didn't add that Me to too. the list. Um, that would probably be number 12. Um, mm-hmm. probably, I'd put that ahead of um, um, Top Gun Maverick and Pinocchio, so maybe like mm-hmm. 11. Um, but yeah, those are, that's about what I had. Nice. Uh, yeah, I'll just quick run through uh, 11 through 20. 11 was After Sun, which we've talked about. Number 12 was Emily the Criminal, uh, that Aubrey Plaza nice. movie. I thought that was really well done. I had a great time watching it. Nice, like, small-time crime kind of movie. CD underbelly, credit card, yeah. card fraud. Kind of showed a world that I didn't know much about, and I liked that. Uh, 13 is On the Count of Three. Great little movie. Uh, 14 was Decision to Leave, which we've talked about. 15 was Fall. The uh, the two girls who climb a 2000 foot television tower and then get stuck up there just so well executed. I, I mean, if you if you had a good time with Solo, watch Fall because they know what they're doing. Uh, and then followed okay. by Pinocchio at 16, All Quiet on the Western Front, 17, The Northman at 18. Uh, bones and all made it to number 19 just because it's weird and it doesn't completely work, but it's got some stuff going for it. Oh, it's it does. Got, there are some like five star moments in yeah Bones and, and the, okay. the Rylance okay. and school bar connection and what they bring yeah. to it. I mean I just couldn't deny. Um and then uh number 20 women talking because nice. it is really well made. I, I did really like it. I'd be willing to give it a second shot. It'd probably move up. Um but yeah so that was my top 20. Um but again yeah just kind of a disappointing uh movie uh, year for movies I felt like a lot yeah. of stuff at three and three and a half that was just okay. Um but there we go. Over to you Nate yeah, so for me, then I'll just go 11 through 20 as well yeah. here, because that would be that'll be the end of my four stars. Or actually, okay, I have perfect. 21, so I'll just go to that. Mm-hmm. Um, Armageddon Time at 11, Pinocchio mm-hmm. at 12, The Fallout at 13. Nice. Apollo 10 and a half at 14, Happening, the French abortion drama at 15. Okay, yep. On the count of three at 16, Glass Onion at 17, RRR at 18, Cha Cha Real Smooth at 19, The Outfit at 20. I was wondering when that was going to make an appearance. Yeah, and uh, a Spanish comedy called Official Competition at number twenty-one, nice. starring Antonio Banderas and Penelope Cruz. Okay, okay. <laughs> which yeah, saw that with uh, our buddy Steve over at the main, and we both really enjoyed it. So nice. One nice. of my favorite comedies of the year, so I had to include that as well. Nice. And also, that does remind me—I forgot Glass Onion. That is not on my. So I actually watched sixty-five yeah. movies this year, but there that would go. not have made my. That still would have been yeah. just shy of my. Yeah, okay. I've added a couple. I think I'm I think I'm around like 40 somewhere mm-hmm. there. So obviously yeah. a lot less, but um, yeah. still pretty pretty good clip for us. I mean, all right. Well, there we yeah. go. I, uh, yeah, um, and so there's our top 10 of the year. We still have our Speak, Film, and Enter awards. Also, the Oscars are next week. We're going to have a little Oscar preview discussion uh, episode coming up, and uh, then we're going to try to predict the winners, and then the winner of that competition will pick uh, the following week's movie club. So be sure and tune in to our Oscar preview. Very high stakes. Yes, very high stakes. The highest of stakes. We all have a movie in mind that we're going to force the others to watch if we win. <laughs> so um, is, is that how we're going to do this? Is that going to be like, uh, does it have to be something that we haven't seen? Or or can um, we just have to be, I think, like, it would be, like, I think that would I've be nice. Seen it, I've seen it. You two haven't. We're watching it. Yeah, it would. Be, I think it would be kind of a waste if it was like, I know we've all seen this, but I'm going to make us <laughs> move. No, I meant yeah. like, if, like if you win are you allowed to pick something you've seen or does whoever wins so. have, have to pick something that they haven't seen? And no, like- I think, 
I think I think there's no rules on what you pick. I just I would I was assuming that it would be the type of deal where it's like, OK, I'm going to make these two guys watch this because that's kind of what I think, too. That's more that's fun. How it will be used. Yeah. Um. All right. And then just before I I, I know we almost did this before I uh, do the quote to wrap up the show. Can we just do a quick rundown of everyone's top 10? Just real quick, Adam, if you just want to hit sure. it. Yeah. I'll start. Uh, 10, Petit Maman, 9, Good Luck to You, Leo Grand, 8, RRR, 7, Bodies, 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 uh, or Decision to Leave, uh, 6, All Quiet on the Western Front, number 5, Batman, uh, number 4, Banshee to Sheeran, number 3, Tar, number 2, Everything Everywhere All at Once, and number 1, Marcel, The Show with Shoes On. Excellent. Uh, my number 10 was Cha-Cha Real Smooth, number 9 was Pearl, number 8 was Hustle, number 7 was Hit the Road, Number six was Top Gun Maverick. Number five is The Batman. Number four, RRR. Number three, Marcel the Shell with Shoes On. Number two, The Banshees of Inishirin. And last, but certainly not least, The Hill That I Will Die On One Day. Nope. (laughs) And then for me, number 10 was Nope. Number nine, Tar. Number eight, The Batman. Number seven, The Banshees of Inishirin. Number six, Decision to Leave. Number five, Marcel the Shell with Shoes On. Number four, Petite Maman. Number three, After Sun. Number two, Women Talking. And number one, Hit the Road. There it is. And Adam, I've got, the, uh, I've got our outro. Sounds good. All right. Uh, my turn to put a wrap on the show. You guys all good? Take it, take take it, it away. away. All right. The dream you're chasing, the one where you end up at the top of the mountain, all eyes on you. It's the dream you never wake up from. <laughs>